<laughs> Love that. Uh, welcome back to Sunday Brunch. We're now joined by Gemma Ween. Gemma, you made me happy today because you brought your children. And yes. it's made me happy that our show is an environment that you would be comfortable bringing your children. It's also a reminder of how it was only a few months ago where we weren't allowed anyone in the studio. Yeah. Well, right. guests were allowed to come, no entourage wow. at all, and things are loose. I know, but it's an entourage, so, <laughs> more yeah. of a necessity. An, an, an entourage <laughs> of two children. Yeah, <laughs> and one of them is still five. a baby, so I'm still yeah. feeding him, so he had to come with me, and then, of course... Can't be down wonderful. there on his own. How are they down there? They're good. We've just done a load of Lego and, yeah, they're doing Lego. So, uh, did you bring the Lego in or did we have it? Was well, it on your ride? No, you're not that good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he did give us an Easter egg, which is a big win, but yeah, we Lego in ourselves. Next time we'd, we'd like some gifts like that. Though. Yeah. <laughs> Ah, uh, we're not that good. <laughs> uh, let's talk about Gentleman Jack. Um, second uh, series, series two, as mm -hmm. they like to call it. Um, what happened in series one? Tell us the concept of Gentleman Jack for anyone who missed it. Uh, concept of Gentleman Jack, it's about this amazing woman called Anne Lister, who was the first openly gay woman in the 1800s and, and lived her life very much sort of front-footed and, and fully... Uh, she was unapologetic about who she was and how she lived her life and, and what she was in terms of being, being gay. But, of course, that was not a thing that really existed then. So she was sort of quite a sort of pioneer in that field. And so she... Uh, it's the first series is a sort of the thrill of the chase. She meets a woman called Anne Walker, who eventually... who they, they marry, um, you know, in, in terms of, like, they have a secret sort of ceremony that, right. all, all, to all intents, that sort of binds them for for life and uh yes and then sort of so that's the through the chase is the first series and the second series is kind of like the uh the machinations of married life and moving in together and she moves into shipton hall where my character mary and her sister lives with our father and our aunt and uh yeah and it's based it's, it's based on a true story that, yeah that's the thing isn't it yeah. she's, she's a real the character other day, she doesn't really make any of it up it's all in this this diary that, that Anne Lister kept a diary daily, sort of minute by minute almost, there's sort of millions and millions of, of words. Um, I think it's five million words. And a sixth of it was kept in code, was written in code, which was cracked, I, I'm going to get it wrong, in the, I want to say the 1970s. Um, and so suddenly this other world opened up of her secret life, I suppose. She was, you know, she, she still had to be a little secretive about the, the sort of gay aspect of her life, even though she was perfectly fine with it herself. It was one that was very much frowned upon for anyone who thought she was a bit unusual. So. Yeah, frowned upon, but I, I imagine the laws came later. Yeah. So yeah. I imagine it was acceptable, yes. even though frowned upon, because it wasn't illegal, and yes. then we decided to make it illegal yeah. at some stage, I imagine. I suppose so, yeah. And, uh, and her family are very accepting of it, because I don't think they fully understand, like, often if a woman was not inclined to marry, she would move in with another woman, and that would be... But normally that happened when you're a bit older... So it was sort of... The, like the spinster kind of... Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But there was, there was sort of room that these two women who were disinclined to marry would move in together and, and, and enjoy a life together. But the sort of the, the sexual aspect of it was sort of less understood or mm. even thought of, I think. Mm. <laughs> I, I wonder what she would make of her words being used now or these years later yeah. for entertainment. I think she'd be thrilled. She always... Yeah. Um, we were at a Q&A the other day and... and um, one of the audience members said that she had a sort of um, an aspiration, what's it called, an affirmation written somewhere that, like, one day I shall change the world or one day I shall be known for something. Ah. Um, it, way back when. So, so she'd be thrilled, I think, that she's been turned into this sort of international, sort of globally successful, you know, much-loved character. Amazing. So, yeah. I, was, I was watching last night, and, and Saran is so powerful in it. Isn't she? But the interaction she has with you as her sister, then you see the softer side, and I really like that. Yeah. It's quite a dramatic change, quite a lot, when you're sort of quite, quite you know, chatting to each other as sisters, obviously. Yeah, yeah the, the sibling aspect is really yeah. beautifully observed by Sally, and, you know, Marion is the less interesting sibling of the two of them, obviously, um, but she still wants to be part of Anne's life and part of the excitement and... and they do defer to one another, and it is, uh, it's, um, with such a bold character as Anne, I think Sally's writing really allows all the other characters to still bubble really interestingly, which is, you know, a great gift for us all to play. S S Sally Wainwright's gift seems to be that, that ability to kind of just develop characters almost with, with the click of a finger, that she just gets it so yeah. right. Yeah, she gets it so right, and, and, and the idea that, that everyone's sort of sometimes talking over each other in those eat, in eating scenes, like, she always wanted us to be digging in and just, you know talking over one another and sound department went mad obviously because <laughs> you need the sound individually but um yeah she's just really clever with her yeah. character drawing certainly 
I like watching TV where everyone talks over each other because yeah. it feels very natural, like me <laughs> doing an interview whilst they're dropping the secrets plates out of someone else's like, computer. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I can't get you on without talking about Game of Thrones. Your 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 character, uh, your great joy was one of the, one of the greats, wasn't she? I, mean, I was thinking about it last night. Actually, your character just had so many twists and turns and ups and downs. Yeah. It must have been beautiful to play. It was great to play. I miss those leather boots now. But it was really <laughs> um, it was really special to play such a sort of representation of a woman. You know, she's powerful. She's strong. She's interesting. She's she got swagger. She knows who she is. And I think it's not one of the first times but to, to have a character written like that, that women are strong and powerful. It, 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 was, yeah. it was great. To Did it change that. your life both personally for the amount of celebrity and also career-wise? I think certainly the latter, yes, career-wise. I think it, because I was sort of known for comedy before that, so to, to sort of break into the drama side was what I had always wanted to do and then to sort of maybe juggle both. So that certainly was um, a door opened. But I, so in terms of, like, the word celebrity is quite funny because, um, you know... I very rarely get recognised, or people think they know me from what, the no, library. Or not even in the lazy fruit section of your supermarket. Sometimes, yeah. do you know what? I have been asked in the lazy fruit section sometimes. Are you really going to buy that lazy fruit? Um, but Peel yeah. your own mango. Yeah. <laughs> your own mango. Oh, you started stand up, didn't you? I did start. Have you given that up yeah. now, or were you going I have. back? Yeah, oh, it, was no. sort of, it was always a vehicle to sort of try and get to, to be an actor. You know, right. to try, you right. know, to sort of get seen and get noticed and be. That's like a terrifying way to do it. It's terrifying, yeah. Could should have gone to drama school, but no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Terrify myself every night and try and yeah. get noticed. So yeah. Excellent. Cheers, Gemma. Um uh, round two now of Hobby Wars. Gemma, if you'd like to stand up, please. We'll get um Hi. so next up is Gemma, by the way. You've got I your own. Environment. <laughs> There we go. And uh, um, get 30 seconds on the clock uh, if you'd like to tell us about your hobby now. I feel like now. it was the balloon debate when I was at school. <laughs> did you remember them? Yeah, the what? <laughs> I did a balloon debate at school. You had to try and like win the debate of why your thing was the best. And I said that mums were the best and I won. <laughs> But anyway, well, let's my mum's not my hobby. That'd be weird. So, <laughs> <let's go. laughs> being, a mom, being, my, being a mum is a job. Right. Gemma, go. Um, okay, it's very exciting. My hobby is the Japanese art of paper folding, also known as right, origami. origami. Um, as you can see here, a little example for you. Yeah. Have a little uh, mm. Japanese fan. Right. Thank you very much. Um, it's it's uh, it's just wonderful to be able to make a little square of paper into something magic, like a crane or something that moves and can fly. And um, it's very relaxing, it's very restful, it's med very meditative. You don't have to lie to your spouse and tell them you're going to the golf course. <laughs> it's not so misogynistic. Well done, well done, well done. Um, do you have to use special paper for this or...? No, you can use... Well, you can... It has to be a square. What's but the risk of paper cuts? Like it's how, quite high. It's very intense. risky. Yeah, it's quite an intense. It's, it's right, you need, you need a paper. How do you start that? Do you start like with paper airplanes when you're five or six? Because I remember trying to make paper airplanes as a kid and I was the one that you'd throw it and it'd just go straight down. Yeah, I could never get me paper airplanes to fly. How long do they take to do? It depends. It can take a unicorn takes a good hour. Uh, well, it doesn't mean anyway. That's unicorn but, origami. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, I did a rag up when we were in lockdown. <laughs> if you recall when we were doing from our from our home, I did uh, I did an origami rabbit that I made for you, Tim. Did you enjoy we were, it? Uh, I showed it on the show. Yeah, I know. Did you enjoy doing it? I loved it. Yeah. How did it taste? Yeah. But <laughs> it didn't take it out, but it wasn't brilliant, I'll be honest with you, Gemma. It's I, very I felt... restful though. It's a nice restful thing to do. It's very Yeah. They're yeah. very concentrated. If you've got sort of other things going on in your mind, you could just concentrate on that. The, thing, the frustrating thing is, though, it's a bit like when you build flat pack furniture. If you turn something the wrong way, if you get... Yeah, the, you're right, yeah. Then, it's one yeah. twist and then it's you're over. One you know, and you won't realise what you've done yeah. until you get it. And my rabbit got like, slightly disappointed and slightly droopy ears rather than, you know, yeah. sticky. Anyway. We'll be back for about <laughs> three. I feel like I've won. Time. I think you have. Welcome <laughs> back to you, Sunday Brunch. We're still here. Boys Life are here. Gemma's here. Munoz here. Before the break, we showed you this celebrity artefact. But which celebrity does this plastic peg belong to? <laughs> um, Star the expensive light show. Oh, we can uh, reveal the celebrity, celebrity artifact is, is Gemma. Gemma, can you tell us all what? about this exciting celebrity artifact? Well, <laughs> it's, a, it's a big stretch, isn't it? But we're looking at that BAFTA, so here we go. <laughs> 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 yeah. um, it's always in my bag, that peg. Um, I have a bag that is quite annoyingly full of shrapnel and random mm. rubbish, but occasionally things come in handy. And it came in handy recently when I managed to fashion a nappy 
out of some cling film, a muslin, and that peg because we'd left the house with nothing. Cling film? Yeah. Oh. Well, we had some sandwiches. So you can see everything that's going on. Yeah, that, but then you put the muslin around it, face. just with a little waterproof bit, bit and then you put the muslin around, and then I just tied it and pegged it, and it just did the job until we got home. Well done. See, yeah, I like that. I like that. Artifact is strong, but there we go. Yeah, that's still a quick quiz, Tim. I love a quick quiz. You know, it's at this time of the show where Tim Lovejoy finds out what the first jobs were. Well, the jobs they did before they were international celebrities. Which one of our international or celebrity do you think used to teach couples to do a first dance do you think it's boys like <laughs> 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 do you think it's Gemma or do you think it's Munya mm. having one? just seen the boys life video I'm gonna go <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go for Gemma Gemma was <laughs> correct well done. you won that quiz tell us about that job yeah I used to teach wedding couples uh, their first dance I used to go to their homes and, and I used, would, they would choose music and they would tell me what they wanted wanted to achieve and then I would go week on week or one off or what sort yeah. of things do they want to achieve anything from like the dirty dancing full on oh. choreography that the final dance to um, just like not embarrassing themselves so like just learning how to sort of sway together you should speak to the diversity boys I think they could use a few, yeah. few tips <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah are you are you a trained dancer yeah I trained as a dancer yeah that's what I did um, was there really really bad ones like that I just couldn't move um no one is unteachable. Really? Yeah, no one's unteachable. But did you ever have to bring them to the lake to do the hold? Oh, yeah, we did it all. Yeah, yeah. They've got the budget. I'll, I'll bring them. But, yeah, um, no, no one's unteachable. Just you've got to work at their level. Was so. there any husbands or wives who really didn't want to do it, but one of them was being... Yes, surprised? there were. I just terrified people might be watching. Yeah, but, um, yeah there were several people who certainly I thought just didn't belong together. And certainly who were Didn't just, belong together? No, no. Sometimes... I <laughs> Tell be, us more. Come sometimes on, leave I would, it. This is getting really I interesting now. I was moved by how beautiful and how much sometimes people would belong together. And sometimes I think this is just such a waste of money because this is not going to last. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. But how do moment. you price it then? Do you say, right, okay, it will how cost do I you. Price it? <laughs> you know, is it by the day? <laughs> God, you know, that is a great question. You know what I mean? That you sort of think, question. if it's going to take me yeah. 15 days to teach yeah. you, surely that comes saying, right, okay. What well, if we'll... she has a menu? Yeah. Dirty dancing. A menu. Yeah. <laughs> da, 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 da. yeah. Category A, B, or C dancing. Yeah. Well, Swain's 50 quid. I work Dirty for Swain's grand. 50 quid. I used to work, it was an agency, so I used to just get booked by the agency and then they'd siphon off quite a lot from the top and I would end up with like 25 quid. Hold on, there's an agency. Yeah, it's an agency of Corey photographers and then we would yeah it was yeah and then but it was a great it was a great job i loved it it's fascinating going to people's homes and like mm. all walks of life all demographics all kind of levels of wealth it was really really you know, a brilliant I, I job i think I loved we're going it. to start looking for you to do it again now i'm mm. in i'm in if, if the price is right and what, yeah. and what, what was the most popular one? Was there, was there a song or a dance that kept coming up? No, I never got a repeat. I never got a repeat. Wow. No. You she never actually got a told Ed us all that was um, always on a West Coast. Ed Sheeran was quite popular. Um, what was but quite popular? Ed Sheeran. Ed but I did Fat Boy Slim. I did, as I say, Dirty Dance. Hold on. Ed Sheeran, that's yeah, quite yeah. modern. Yeah, and you and some people didn't understand it really needed a beat. And some of them were so up. slow. There was one that did um, The Bangles, <laughs> Eternal Flame. <laughs> and um, it was really, really slow. That's me doing Gangnam Very good. Very good. Yeah. Oh, no. She'll sort you out know. afterwards, too, don't worry. <laughs> um, they chose the Eternal Flame, but um, the Bangles, and it was so slow. So I said, can you just find a sort of quicker version of it next week? But he couldn't, so he just had turned the dubbing up. No. So it just oh. sounded like the Chipmunks. And I just had to go, great, great, we've solved it, and just... <laughs> when Ed Sheeran was around, weren't you on telly then? It was the one when he's in the big dance hall. Do it, singing out loud. Is that a thinking out loud? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. thinking out loud. Like thinking out loud. That one. So it was. A, I was already a little bit on telly, but not enough to. It, it began to get a little bit awkward towards the. the when you're the, in Game of Thrones. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hold on, a great choice turned up to teach us how to dance. Well, sometimes it was. You look familiar. I'm like, oh no, I'm just one of those faces. Let's let's, let's dance. <laughs> <laughs> All right.